Lesson 7 is going to deal with a couple of similar topics, rates and average, and also measures of central tendency. Um, average is a measure of central tendency. Let's go ahead. Alba ran 30, or excuse me, 21 miles in 3 hours. What was her average speed in miles per hour? Well, we kind of saw one like this in a previous lesson. And I told you that the first thing my eyes are drawn to is this miles per hour. Uh, that is a rate, okay? So we can go ahead and set up a rate uh, in miles per hour based on the information they gave us. 21 miles per 3 hours. Okay, now that's a rate. Uh, but when they want the average speed, they're really, they're really talking about a unit rate, meaning how many miles per 1 hour. So we want the, the second unit to be 1. That's what's called a unit rate. So we just divide. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So her average speed is 7 miles per hour. How far can Freddie drive in 8 hours at an average speed of 50 miles per hour? Okay, I'm going to do this one uh, using unit analysis. And unit analysis is where you actually write the units of measure in your problem. So here's my speed, 50 miles for every one hour. Here's my time, eight hours. Okay. Um, the hours notice we got hours on bottom and hours on top. Those cancel out. Okay. So the only unit you're left with is miles, and that's what we're trying to find out. How far can Freddie drive? How many miles can he drive? Well, we'll just do 50 times eight is 400 miles. So if he averages 50 miles per hour for 8 hours, he's going to go 400 miles. If a commuter train averages 62 miles per hour between stops that are 18 miles apart, about how many minutes does it take the train to travel the distance between two stops? All right, well, the first thing I'm going to do is draw just a quick diagram to make sure I'm looking at this right. you got stop 1 and stop two, and the distance between these two stops is 18 miles. Okay, so we're being asked how long will it take the train to travel 18 miles. That is the distance between two stops. All right. Um, now, the next thing I look at is, you know, it's saying about how many minutes. So, you know, 62 miles is, or I'm sorry, miles per hour is about 60 miles per hour and that's a lot easier to work with because 60 miles per hour is one mile per minute because there's 60 minutes in an hour so this is a lot easier to compute and if we're going one minute for every mile and we're going 18 miles then it's going to take us about 18 minutes now we're actually going a little faster than 60 miles per hour. We're going 62 miles per hour, so it's going to be a little bit under 18 minutes, but you know, close enough. And you know, if you're driving down the highway at 60 miles per hour, um, you know, you can figure about a minute for every mile that you travel. If you're going 70 miles per hour, a little bit faster than a minute for every mile. 50 miles per hour, a little bit slower than a minute for every mile. If the average number of students in three classrooms is 26 and one of the classrooms has 23 students, then which of the following must be true? Okay, so we're talking about measures of central tendency now, okay? Um, the average number is 26. That means 26 is the middle. Okay, so if we have a number under 26, like 23, then at least one of our other numbers has got to be above 26, the measure of central tendency. So, um, you know, let's look for something that says that. At least one classroom has fewer than 23 students. That doesn't have to be true. Uh, at least one classroom has more than 23 students and less than 26 students. Again, that doesn't have to be true. At least one classroom has exactly 26 students. You know, it's an average. You don't have to have um, one of the classrooms having 26. At least one classroom has more than 26 students. Um, yeah. That's that's our answer right there.
Yeah, that's the one we want to go with. At least one classroom has more than 26 students. If we have one with more than 26 and one with less than 26, they might average out to be 26. We have a third classroom, but we're not even considering that right now. What is the mean of 84, 92, 92, and 96? Okay, mean is one type of average. Um, and the way you find the mean is by adding up all the numbers you're given. It's the most common average. You add up all the numbers you're given, and then you divide by how many numbers you're given. Four numbers in this case. Their sum is 364. Uh, and 364 divided by 4 is 91. Okay, so 91 is the mean average of these four numbers. And, you know, when you look at it, 91's in the middle of these numbers. You know, we got three numbers that are bigger than 91 and only one number smaller, uh, but 91 is what we'd call the mean, okay? You're never going to have a mean that's bigger than your biggest number or smaller than your smallest number either. It's a measure of central tendency, what's in the middle. The heights of five basketball players are 184 centimeters, 190 centimeters, 196 centimeters, 198 centimeters, and 202 centimeters. What's the average height of the five players? You know, it says average. There's a couple different kinds of average, but usually when we say average, we're asking about the mean average. So we'll do this the same way we did the last one. Take the five heights of the players. Add them up and divide by 5 because there is 5 players. Uh, if you stack them all on top of each other, they'd be 970 centimeters high, which is about 194 centimeters tall per player. Again, we don't have any one player that's 194 centimeters, but um, that's the middle. The price per pound of apples sold at... Uh, different grocery stores is reported below. Uh, so we got these eight grocery stores reporting this price per pound of apples. Uh, first, we're asked to do a few different things. The first one is display the data in a line plot. Um, let's go ahead and double screen this so we can see everything, okay? Um, display the data in a line plot. Okay, so a line plot would look like this where we have um, a number line and we put um, some scaling on our number line. I'm going to go from a dollar to a dollar fifty to two dollars and to two dollars and fifty cents. That's close enough, okay? Ninety nine cents is about a dollar. A dollar ninety nine is about two dollars, so good enough. And then let's display uh, this data via this line plot. So every time we have a dollar or ninety nine cents, um, we put an X over that dollar. Dollar ninety nine, put an X over two dollars. Dollar forty nine, X goes there. Dollar ninety nine, that's two dollars. Dollar forty nine, ninety nine cents, two forty nine, and a dollar forty nine. So there's our eight stores and how much they charge per pound of apple. Okay, and you can kind of see the range of the prices better this way. And you can also see what price occurs most often this way. And that leads us to our next question. Uh, it says compute the mean, median, mode, and range of the data. Okay, well the mean uh, we would find by adding up all the prices per pound, which I've done already. It comes out to $12.92 and dividing by um, the eight stores that charge that much or eight pounds. So the average price or the mean price ends up being $1.62 per pound. Okay, now the median's a little bit different. The first thing you got to do with the median is line all these prices up in order. Uh, and on this line plot, we've already done that. We've got 99 cents, 99 cents, $1.49, $1.49, $1.49, 199, 199, and 249. So the middle price would be since we have 8, um, 1 2 3 4, okay? The middle price would be halfway between our fourth and fifth. Now, our fourth and fifth are both a dollar forty-nine, so our median price is a dollar forty-nine. Again, one, two, three, four prices that are below a dollar forty-nine, and four prices that are above a dollar forty-nine, or equal to. 
Okay, and lastly, the mode. The mode's the easy one. It's the one that occurs most often, and our line plot clearly tells us that a dollar forty-nine occurs most often. All right, last thing. Rudy computed the average price and predicted that he would usually have to pay a dollar sixty-two per pound for apples. Evaluate Rudy's prediction based on your analysis of the data. Uh, well, the problem is he says that we're going to usually pay a dollar sixty-two per pound, but nobody charges a dollar sixty-two per pound. Uh, so, you know, I kind of disagree with Rudy there. I would say, um, make that a little bit bigger, that Rudy can expect to usually pay a um, dollar forty-nine per pound based on the median and the mode. He'll never pay excuse me, a dollar sixty two per pound. Okay. So um, there's an intro to mean, median, and mode. Um, hopefully you've had them before, and we'll do more with them in coming lessons, um, and, and also some rates and averages problems. All right, come in tomorrow with your questions, and have a great night.